I'm going to show you this McLaren turbo that I did an upgrade for. Originally, the compressor wheel was 47 millimeter by 58, and this wheel that this customer sent in is a 50 millimeter by, I think, 68. To do this upgrade, I had to machine the bearing housing for the compressor wheel. The wheel, I measured 50 millimeter by 67 millimeter. The bearing housing had to get machined to 68.2 which is 1.2 millimeter larger than the wheel. Then I also had to machine the bearing housing for the upgraded thrust spacer. The purpose of that is so this guy can run high boost reliably. Without that upgrade, this thrust bearing would go bad and cause a bunch of problems. So if you need the rebuild kit, I'll link to that in the description box. It's a part that we carry. I don't have these compressor wheels. Here's the factory wheel in comparison to the upgrade. The factory compressor wheel was 47 millimeter by 58 millimeter. The compressor upgrade is 50 by 67 millimeter. This is just the stock McLaren turbo, but upgraded. So all we did with this, we used this provided compressor wheel. I machined his compressor housing. I had to cut it on the inside to grab it on the chuck with the chuck on the inside because the outside is off by three thousandths and I couldn't surface it on the outside. I tried to make a tool to do that and it just chattered too bad. This is what it looks like machined. I'd like to write a CNC program for this if anyone has the ability to do that or has the wheel dimensions I can have that done and I could do it for other people if they want me to do this build. Otherwise, it's pretty, it's a hard build without the CNC program. With the CNC program, I should be able to get this done in like 20 minutes. But because I didn't have the program, I had to measure here to the tip of that wheel. And then I cut it flat. And then I just used the other wheel to paint and mark, like see where it was touching. And I just cut it until the wheel had proper clearance. And then I could look from the top side to see the clearance here to the wheel. It's very time consuming to do that. It took me from like 9 a.m. till a little after five o'clock before I was done with both housings. The inducer is no problem though. That's super easy to do on a CNC machine. I just have to know the wheel dimensions and the spacing between the wheel, which I already know that information, and then I just machine it out to the proper size. The way you can figure that out, just take your factory wheel, measure it, then me measure the inside bore there and then subtract the two and then you'll know how much bigger the housing should be than the new wheel. The turbine wheel is a nine blade TDO4HL. This is already machined for the TDO4HL turbine. So this is the biggest that Mitsubishi offered. This 52 millimeter x deucer is 45.6 millimeter. Because it's nine blade, it's gonna help more air exit out the exhaust side too. It'll work really well with this upgraded compressor wheel. Here's what it looks like completed machine for the compressor wheel. I also flared it in and polished it out. The original turbo, you can see it had debris go through it. Sometimes that can happen where if the engine has an issue where a valve or a piece of piston came apart and went through the turbine wheel, Another thing that can cause that if they have are running lots of anti-lag and it's just getting so hot. These are Mitsubishi TDO4 turbos. They're pretty reliable if you upgrade the thrust bearing and thrust collar. If you do the upgrade, you really have to upgrade the internal rebuild kit parts, which require machining the bearing housing for the spacer. This is a 7.3 power stroke stock turbo. So this is Claren turbo, it's got two of these. When I look at these turbine housings, I just noticed it was cracked there, but otherwise it's in pretty good shape. You got that chamfer there, which is really nicely done. That helps prevent it from cracking. And the wastegate flap closed properly and it didn't have any excess play here. So that's the kind of things that I'm checking for here. This is a really big outlet for a car. So I think this is probably four inch or so. And you got two of these turbos. So that would help it make a lot of additional horsepower by having that outlet so big. 
And the wastegate hole's plenty big in there too, so I like that. This is where the blow off valve goes. It's actually called a diverter valve. The way it works, but it's the same concept. The way it works is the compressed air comes through here. When the valve opens, which seals around this area, the air moves from here into the intake. One thing about the diverter valve that you really need to know though, is that the spring pressure and the diverter valve, if it's not high enough, you can't run higher boost because it'll automatically open at that spring pressure. Sometimes you have to upgrade the spring in those to run higher boosts to make this turbo upgrade worth it. I don't know what the factory spring pressure is on the McLaren, but it's definitely something that should be looked into before these get installed. So it just goes from here and goes right in. There's also a block off plate so you can eliminate that and then just put a blow off valve on the charge pipe somewhere. Having the diverter valve right there at the turbo is the most efficient way for performance and fuel mileage. So that's, it's not really a bad thing to have it there. It's just that if you have it there, you need to make sure the spring is the right pressure. You want a blow off valve that it's designed to have different noises. Well, you're kind of limited to this one. So you may want to just block that off and then do your own type of blow off valve on it. This customer sent in his own rebuild kits. I didn't like the thrust bearings, so I ended up changing them out. What, what I didn't like about these thrust bearings is the oil holes are much smaller than mine. So I just prefer to use mine. What I'm talking about is these holes right here. 